Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches Middle School Math Survival Guide. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hi friends, this is Mr. Woods Teaches, and today I'm continuing my math series for 8th grade end of year mathematics, and this is video 4 of 5. Let's take a look here. Number 16, which set of ordered pairs represent a function? We have these sets of ordered pairs, and we need to know what is an ordered pair and what is a function. Well, an ordered pair here, I'm going to circle this one here, and that's an xy. And sometimes you might hear me call it a coordinate pair because it shows me that these are the coordinates for a point on a graph. Another way to look at this is also is as a function. So if I have y is equal to 3x plus 1, okay, and I have this table here. I'm just going to put it like this. I have x and y. So for every x, there's a, there's a y. So I can put in here, I can say 0, and y is equal to 1. If I put in 1 for x, y is equal to 4. And I put in another x value here, let's say 3. And that's going to be 9, that's going to be 10. Notice how I get a, a unique result for each value of x. So therefore, I can only have one value of x equal one value of y. Over here, if I look at here, I have a value of x, and there's a y. Value of x, and there's a y. Now, I can have the same values of y. However, I cannot have the same values of x here. And I'm going to show you something here real quick, and the reason for that. A function cannot have x repeating in any ordered pair of a set. However, y can repeat. And that's just one of these rules here that we have here. And I just wanted to bring that out here. So that might make this easier. So let's go back to our problem here. So I know that this isn't true. I have a 3, 3, 3. I cannot repeat x's in that set. I cannot repeat x's in that set. However, I have unique x there and there and there. Now the y's are the same. See how those are all the same. But the x's are different. Therefore, this is my answer. This is the correct answer here, and that's all because of this right here. 17. A parallelogram with vertices 0, 3, 2, 0, 4, 2, and 2, 5 is reflected over the y-axis. Which vertex of the parallelogram will have the same x-coordinate before and after the reflection? So let's take a look. at What do we need? It says here, so it tells us it's a parallelogram, and it has these vertices here, so that's relevant. It's reflected over the y-axis, and then it asks for which vertex of the parallelogram has the same x-coordinate before and after the reflection. So there's, that's all pertinent information. One of the things that you need to do many times is you have to draw a coordinate grid. Here I already have it done. So this is my x-axis, and this is my y-axis, just to get that done and over with. Also, we need to understand how to plot these coordinates. So I have 0, 3, so that's an x and y. So x is 0, y is 1, 2, 3. There we go. And then I have 2, 0, so x is 2 and y is 0. And then I have 4, 2. There's 4 and then 1, 2 here. And then 2, 5. So there's 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I have this parallelogram. I'm going to roughly draw it out like this here. There we go. Not too, not too shabby. So it's going to be reflected over the y-axis. So imagine there's a mirror here, and you see the reflection on it. Now, So it's going to be 1, 2, 1, 2. So I'm going to have it. Just to give you a general idea, like this, and then 1, 2, and 5, so negative 2, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's right here. See, I'm starting to make it, there's that. There's this reflection here, okay? I don't need to continue drawing because I already have the answer. It says here, which vertex of the parallelogram will have the same x-coordinate before and after the reflection? right here. There it is. So it's definitely going to be 0, 3. So 0, 3 is my first one here. I did not have to go back and look at any others. 
because it hasn't changed. All the others are going to change. So for example, here we have 4, 2, negative 4, 2 right here. Look at that. So this is the only one that hasn't moved. 18. What are the solutions to the following inequality? Well, first off, you have to understand what a solution is and what an inequality is. So this is an inequality right here. So 5x is greater than or equal to 125. And it says these are the solutions. So they're, we're looking for the solution. That's when they talk about that. They're looking for, you know, what is, see right here? There's that x. It's trying to find out what is x. What are the solutions to x? So I can look at this and go, okay, well, I have 5x is greater than or equal to 125. So we have 5x is greater than or equal to 125. I need to isolate this x. So what do I need to do is I need to divide each side by 5. And that's going to give me x is greater than or equal to, well, what times 5 is equal to 125? So I can go through and I can do the division. So let's just do the division real quick. 125 divided by 5. That's going to be a 0. And then 12, that's going to be 2 times 5 is 10, all right? And then I subtract all that and get 25, and I know 5 times 5. So 25 times 5 is, so there we go. Now I didn't change the sign, so here is my answer right here. Let's look at 19. So it's an inequality as well. I could just see right here, and there it is in the sentence, but let's take a look here at the question. What are the solutions to the following inequality? Again, solutions, and here are our solutions, and this is the inequality. All I need to do, let's just solve this. Let's just do 3x plus 7 is less than 4. Okay, again, I want to isolate this x, but first, before I do that, I'm just going to subtract 7 from each side, so minus 7, and that's going to give me minus 3x is less than negative 3 because 4 minus 7 is going to be minus 3 and I'm like oh hey check this out all I need to do is divide each side by negative 3 so what am I going to get well I'm going to get so this is going to be that's negative 3 over negative 3 that's 1 so it's just x and then over here it's also 1 but what do I do here there, there's this rule where it says that if I divide by a negative number, I have to flip the sign or switch the sign. So now I know that it's x is greater than 1. I just look for that answer here, and boom. So remember, when you're either multiplying or dividing by negatives on each side, you have to flip this sign. 20. If m to the ninth divided by m to the 6th is equal to 8, what is the value of m to the fifth over m squared? Threw this one in because I wanted to see if you can understand what you need to do with this. I'm going, well, what, what is m to the ninth divided by m to the sixth? And I don't like having this, this like this, where it's this variable here and it's six. It's like, what, what, is, what is going on here? Well, there's, there's a, a way to do this is that when you divide a a number of the same base that's raised to a power by another by the same number raised to a, uh, an exponent so it's the here's the same base but they have different exponents this is what I can do I can say well m to the ninth okay and since it's divided by it I'm gonna say minus 6 why is that because I can say that this is m to the ninth right times m to the minus 6. Okay, that's the same thing, and that's going to give me m to the ninth. Now, we're supposed to add these, but since this is a negative, I say 9 minus 6 is equal to m cubed. All right? So I know that. Now, I could solve this and go, oh, well, that's going to be, you know, if it's equal to 8, then this can, then m is equal to 2, but do I really need to have that information over here? Well, let's, let's take a look at this. Let's just get this out of the way. So m to the fifth, right, divided by 
m squared, and we're going to do the same thing that we did up here. That is equal to m to the fifth minus 2, and that's going to equal to m cubed. So therefore, the value of this here, the value of that right there, is 8. That's it for today. Thank you for watching Mr. Woods Teaches, and please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also, watch me correct my mistakes on TikTok at Mr. Woods Teaches.